I have given it much thought. It seems disaster must come. At best, only postponed. The Going Off Podcast, to survive, must now be taught to more young men. We must expand, get more fanboys, so that the knowledge will spread. It's the Going Off Podcast with Rav Grittick and Muse. The fucking Going Off franchise. <laughs> the extended universe. We just have two dudes in other countries just do our same shtick, but translate it. <laughs> We're a little late this time, so we apologize, but ladies and gentlemen, it's double XL freshman cipher time! We're about to show you the highlights, the lowlights, the and the and the uh the, the people who should have just not shown up. There's no denying. There's absolutely no contest for worst. Holy shit, stay home. In the freestyle as well as the cipher, where it's just like, like, le- legitimately, as I'm listening to him, I was just like, so, like, is it, is it like an albino, like, work program, and the, you know what I'm saying, they're trying to get representation for ah. albinos, and they're like, look, this is the mm. only one we got, so, I mean, there's your See. diversity for the double XL cover. <laughs> See, I did not, um, I didn't watch the individual freestyles, but I watched the, uh, the freshman ciphers, um, and I made the mistake of watching the one with uh, Lil Mosey first. Yeah. So he was the first one I saw, and he really... It only got better from there. He's like, God damn, I feel like the man. Freshman of the year, I woke up like the man. Boo! <laughs> Boo! Look, like, I'm just gonna right. tell you, if you're the only person there, as soon as you go, eh, lame-ass beat... They should just... What? What was as that about? So, as soon as you say that, because every fucking year, someone has to say it, right? It's a fucking meme at this point. As soon as you say, whack-ass beat or lame-ass beat, the fucking DJ should just go, oh yeah? Fucking take that shit off and go, all right? <laughs> you fucking do it. Do that shit acapella, <laughs> asshole. See how good you do. Ugh. <laughs> like, what was up? And it didn't even, like, work within what he was talking about. He was no. just like... Okay, this is a lame ass beat. Walk up on your bitch, my dick eight feet deep. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ew, dude. Come on. And look, I, I I'm just gonna go ahead and say, like, other than him, I didn't hate anyone else. Yeah, that was the funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, normally, was, normally, it's a fucking, it's a real mixed bag. Dude, even Blueface, you know, he kind of, he kind of did his thing. I, I still put him as uh, second to the mm-hmm. bottom, but still, it was a fucking, it's a jump. And he was, like, mumbling through it, like, but not in the, oh, it's the style to mumble through, but, like, it was, like, egregiously badly mumbled, where it's just like, okay, seriously, start over. Like It's almost like you can tell sometimes when people just don't give a fuck, right? Yeah. Like, like I just got that vibe. You know, on the outside, it kind of looks like, oh, man, this is really awesome. But, like, when you're inside of it, like, are you really registering that, like, this is the moment for people to see you, man? And this is what you're bringing. Like, all right, well, then fucking next, you know? This is how I ranked it. I said Lil Mosey was the wackest. Why K.O. Cyrus can sing, you know? So I was Uh, like, all right, you know? Uh, Roddy was... You know, just, like, better than Lil Mosey by yeah. nature of, you know, what happens when you try. Um, <laughs> then, then we kind of get to the controversy, so I think, uh, then it was Tierra, Tierra Whack. Uh, her, her verse was kind of weird when she was like, alright, I'm gonna fold, like, these motherfuckers fold like beach chairs, yeah. I'm more like a towel, but wait, towels fold too. Well, anyway, <laughs> it's like, all right, a, well, all right. <laughs> it's like you, you realized how your own metaphor failed in the middle of saying it. And it's like, well, this is awkward now. <laughs> again, I thought Blueface actually wasn't bad. Like, and again, it's like, honestly, all he had to do was try and he tried and I'm glad that he tried, you know, like yeah, usually, yeah. usually don't you usually say like, Jesus, you could have at least tried. He... At least tried. And I and I dug that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Sauce dripping when I'm dressing. Buzzer beater VVS's. I ain't texting back, but she still got the message. I was like, okay. Yeah. Okay. You that was know. clever. Above that, Megan I think Megan the Stallion, Rico Nasty, uh Comethazine was cool. 
YBN and the baby were the fucking all stars. I got a uh, little Mosey. Uh, then I got our pal Blueface. Oh. Then, <laughs> then I got uh, YK uh, Cyrus. Mm. Then I got Roddy Rich. Here comes the controversy. Mm. Then I got the baby. Oh no, you weren't feeling it. Then I got uh, Kalmazine. Okay, yeah. Uh, Megan the Stallion. Huh? Rico Nasty. Okay. YVN Cordae. Okay. okay. <laughs> and Tierra Whack number one. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the beat style thing didn't phase you, eh? <laughs> no. No, I thought that was cute. I thought that was clever. <laughs> no, see, look, here's the thing, right? Uh, DaBaby, because of the way I was watching them, right? I watched the Lil Mosey, Megan Thee Stallion, Osiris, uh, DaBaby video first. So... Mm. In that group, um, half that video is the baby. Yeah, and it's he just fucking goes off, right? Uh. But honestly, if it wasn't so long, it probably would have got a lower rating from me. And so I, it, because it, at first I think I gave it like a four or something, but then I was like, man, if you really look at it, he just went for a while. Yeah, but do I really uh, remember anything he said in that? Not really. You know, it was okay. It, it, um, you, you kinda, it's kind of reminded me of what's her name from a year or so ago. Remember where it was just like it was two guys and then there was a female rapper. Oh fuck yeah! Uh, and it was just kind of like, all right, you could have stopped this a while ago. <laughs> see, and here's the thing. Um, I don't remember. I, I know her name began with a K, but I don't remember how it was pronounced, and yeah. I don't remember hearing anything from her yeah, since then. Yeah. I was pretty impressed with her, I remember, though. I just didn't think to check in on yeah. her. No, you're right. Uh, <laughs> there, 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 there wasn't as many uh, dope lyrics to just shit talking ratio uh, for Bef- this as much. You know, but but I still felt it. I still felt it. Uh, Megan Thee Stallion, I think, was the obvious uh, star in that video. I think she uh, had the best energy of bringing amazing else. energy. Uh, right? I really and liked her flow, but because it went so fast, it went by really yeah. fast. Yeah, it was so short. Um, so I could have definitely done with more of that. Uh, YK Osiris giving us the fucking Amine. I'm gonna sing a little bit. I'm gonna rap a little bit. Uh, I thought his flow was pretty good, and I liked his energy, but. The, but in the context of the cypher and the freestyle, the singing just kind of felt awkward and took me out of it a little bit. Yeah, like, whenever anyone does the singing, it's just like, what? I mean, do you know what we're doing here? What? You, <laughs> you might want to You might want to be the uh, drop the beat from me guy, because over the beat like that, it just sounds weird. Yeah. And I don't know. It sounds very out of place. Um, but then the next video I watched was, uh, uh, Comazine, uh, Roddy Rich, uh, and Tierra Whack. And, again, um, this video I thought was really fucking strong. Um, Comazine, I just liked the dude's personality. Yeah. It's another like, one the of those fucking guys... faces he was pulling, and he just had such attitude. Like, he had the most attitude of, like, anyone there. Yeah, that's what it is. And I think that really came across, and that set him apart. Roddy Rich. I thought it, I thought it was a solid verse, but a solid like average kind of verse. Yeah, like, yeah. He, 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 like, like it was serviceable, like you said. Um, but Tara Whack, dude, I fucking thought she lit it up. Um, it, it was a bit choppy, but that was because like it was the most like authentic of a freestyle. It just felt like, hey, here here's a lot of cohesive ideas I have. They're not really pieced together, but. I'm just, it, it felt like, um, it felt like whenever you watch that Eminem video where he's, like, in the parking garage, and he just does that really whack shit about the, like, I dropped a bomb on Trump's head, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I dropped a flower pot, whatever the fuck he was going That's on That's an about. awfully hot coffee pot. <laughs> that was it! Thank you. The awfully hot coffee pot. Um... No, but I really thought that gave us a nice sense of uh, wax personality, and I think to to me that's really important okay. in the freestyles is mm. because I, I I think I say this every year, but the the context and the atmosphere of the freestyle isn't going to give us an accurate representation of their ability 
or the kind of shit they're actually going to be spitting on a track. The personality, though, that's yeah. going to translate. That's a, that, that's a glimpse of, like, the fun you're going to have listening, the mm-hmm. attitude they're going to bring to the table. So, okay. And I she just say- thought, she seemed like she was really fucking happy to be there, and that came across, and I think that kind of pushed her over the top for me. So I think in terms of, like, energy, in terms of, like, yo, I'm paying attention to this person, I think... Rico, Megan, yeah. and Comethazine, and Tierra Wack. Yeah, you mm. know, they were the really big, remember who I am. But YBN was like the, okay, no, that's the guy that's just like the most, the most lyric fucking yes. sitting over everything. Like, that's the guy that everyone says they like, you know? <laughs> He's the y- Red y- Ranger of the whole <laughs> ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> YBN, uh, he had the best overall written, like the yeah, best yeah, written yeah. verse. Absolutely. fucking uh, I really thought it was dope. He had a really nice flow, and obviously his lyrics were, you know, top tier. Rico and, and Nasty, I, though, fucking woo! Just oh fun, man. Oh my god, you, fucking you bringing seen, it. You should have seen uh, when she did the freestyle, and just the way she looked with all the, like, the weird, different, like, mismatching stuff in her hair, and oh. it was just like, but it was just her energy, and she just didn't give a fuck, it was just like all up in your face about it. Ah, I just love her, man. I, I, she's fucking cool as shit. The response from the, from online has actually been kind of like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> you know? For the most part, people are just like, oh, alright, you guys, did, you actually listened to us this time. <laughs> yeah, like, normally Normally, it's like, man, where the fuck is blank? Or what happened to blank? No, yeah. like, I, I, most people just kind of saw the rundown and went, yeah, this is accurate. <laughs> Although, uh, n- see, now I think we probably messed up, right? Because since mm. we're not talking as much about it, not giving it the, as much engagement, they'll probably be like, oh, shit, no one's talking about us. Well, let's get a bunch of white motherfuckers from next year so they'll talk about us again. Oh, uh, yeah, we're just going to get fucking ten Lil Moseys. <laughs> just Lil a Mosey fucking... <laughs> Oh, uh, just to get us fucking bitching about it. Nah, man, I think Double XL, if it's just, you know, I think you, uh, I think y'all did a really good job picking the fucking cream of the crop, or at least what the fans are bumping. Yeah, um, not too many little zygotes or whatever the fuck. <laughs> um, and, man, if, if nothing else, I really hope, and I hope this every year, but I hope, you know, this actually translates in, like, who we fucking hear on the radio after this. Because yeah, nor- yeah. normally it really doesn't. Like, mm-hmm. Amine was in the fucking class. I, I talk up Amine whenever I fucking can because yeah, good, good, for, good for you and uh, 1.5. I think those are solid fucking releases. They gave him one goddamn single years uh, ago yeah. and nothing since. Like, dude, uh, uh, half he, of each and, album and, and, were fucking radio ready. You know what? He had the shit at uh, uh, at, at uh, uh, Coachella. You know, and he, he was a little difficult at SNL. So you know, they 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 not trying to they not trying to hear that in the mainstream. You know? ah, <laughs> yeah, I guess. But then you got fucking little Dicky over there. Oh, uh, he's fucking rubbing fucking elbows. <laughs> what? Uh, I, I I still out of that whole class, and I know we talk about it so much because it's such a clusterfuck. The fucking designer Kodak Black, Lil Dicky year. Out the of worst everyone, of the worst of the worst, sir. <laughs> the Lil Lucy Verts, the Lil Yachties, but then you got fucking like Denzel Curry and Anderson Pock in there. Out of everyone, Lil Dicky is still the most why. <laughs> and Dude, he didn't it, even do the worst of the freestyle. That clearly goes to designer because he just did the fucking like repeating two or three lines. Wait, over wait, and over. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking Beavis and Butthead head ass rap. <laughs> but <laughs> but look, <laughs> little Diggy. You, I, I recently rewatched uh, Todd in the Shadows episode mm. on. Uh, I can't remember if it was the We Love the Earth one, but it was just oh. like, he perfectly encapsulated, like, how I felt about Lil Dicky, where it's just like, this all just stinks of ass- astroturfing, and like, a marketing guy who's, like, knows how to maneuver, like, basically, he's DJ Khaled, but I'm gonna be silly instead of oh. uh, trying to be, you know, bold-faced about the fact that, you know, like, don't look at the fact that I'm not really doing anything. Just look at how how much of a badass I'm saying that I am. You know, that's DJ Khaled's thing. You know, yeah. Lil, Lil Diggy's thing is, no, I'm going to rap too. You know, I'm going to be, but but my P. Diddyism is going to be that I'm funny and not that I'm just, you know, shouting over the track. You know, I'm, I'm going to be a silly guy even though there's no actual jokes in my uh, Earth song. You know what I mean? Having done the show with you for... 
almost five years now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are a few things I know. It's like the fucking death and taxes. There are certain things uh, that are kind of synonymous with, uh, mm. with, with, with rap, rap critic. critic brand. With the brand, exactly. And I don't want to fucking, I don't want to, I don't want to paint you with too broad a brush here, mm. but it always comes back to gorillas mm. and Wu-Tang. Yeah. Yeah. And Wu-Tang is that fucking standby. And we have, <laughs> we've reviewed quite a number of uh, Wu-Tang yeah. affiliates, Wu-Tang solo projects, that bullshit "Quote unquote Wu Tang <laughs> album from like last year, or the year before that not even half the people were on uh, or wanted to be a part of." <laughs> we reviewed the first album actually. I looked back. We actually have reviewed. Uh, oh my god! The first you fuck. That's right. We did. I for some reason I forgot that we did that. Um, well, I was looking yeah. to make sure that we hadn't already reviewed this because I think we've talked about so many of the lyrics from this album. <laughs> See, th th that's it, right? Because I feel like we've talked about this album so much that it's only a matter of time. It's legend. <laughs> I gotta tell you, man, a fucking two discs, a uh, fucking two-hour album, it's a little intimidating. It <laughs> it's a bit much. <laughs> and, when, and when you don't hear... As many people talking about it as Enter the 36 Chambers, I don't know. It just never felt like it was really, like, I don't want to say worth my time. But, it, it, I mean, two hours is much, an investment. Like, it's one of those things where, like, if people say it's great, I'll believe them. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, it's a fucking Wu-Tang album from 97. You know, it gives them three years uh, after the debut, which... I don't know. I don't know if that feels like a long time or well, not a long time. It's like, I guess like five years because technically the first, well, okay, so the album comes out in 93. This uh, was yeah. 97? Yep. So four years, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, it's, it's weird how, like, and they keep repeating that shit too. That is fucking 1997. Yeah, and this I, is 1997. <laughs> and if it wasn't for that, honestly, I wouldn't really know because it doesn't sound dated, except for a couple tracks. Darian Doster, thank you so much for your, uh, thank you mm. so much for this request. Because... I feel like it was only a matter of time. Right? Like, this had to happen. This is one of those, you know, uh, albums that's in the background of this podcast. You know, you hear a lyric there. You know, you hear a quote, uh, a quote here. You hear a a self-fulfilling <laughs> self prophecy. <laughs> so, I think for, uh, for the off-goers out there who have been waiting a long time, I have but one question. Mm. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to review Wu-Tang forever. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> so, I, as someone who has heard this this album millions of times, probably, <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm gonna kick it to you and Ooh. ask what you think of the. Uh, let's start with the intro. <laughs> oh boy! Um, uh, okay, yeah, wait. You've never heard this intro before. You listen to this album, no. right? No, 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 no. Oh, so, oh, oh, please tell me what you think. Because, <laughs> you know, right, like, as so, someone, like, I'm used to hearing this stuff, so I'm like, you know, it's in my head. I'm used to, like, what happens in this song. But I want to kick it to you ooh. and hear what, your, what the live reaction was. Um, I, I think my live reaction was just, why the fuck is this going on for so damn long? <laughs> because, like, it's not... There's already a track on the album called Intro, but that's the intro to the second disc. So I was like, all right, cool. This track is called Wu-Tang Revolution. All right. Where's this going? What does this got for me? And then it's just like minutes upon minutes of just spoken word. Six minutes and 46 seconds. Oh! Of two guys that aren't even members of the group. <laughs> they're, they're the grand... Uh, Overseers, I guess they're, they're uh, like the guys where they get all their knowledge from. So you know, I guess they had to, you know, uh, uh, l l let them get the intro to be like to show respect. Grand Peepus Wu Tang. Yeah, the yes. older gods. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Uh, fucking foreshadowing there. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, it's your fucking album. You're fucking Wu Tang. I guess you. I guess you have earned the right. 
to, yeah, to you know, go they were, off like they're this? Going for, they're going for something epic, you know, Wu-Tang forever, you know? They're like, ah. how do we start an album that's going to give you the idea that Wu-Tang is forever? Why not a song that sounds like it's lasting forever? <laughs> Why you wouldn't start with Reunited instead of just a six minute long like man that is an easy way to turn off new listeners for fuck's sake like i always wondered because you know this is their biggest selling album yeah and i always wondered like what was it like <laughs> for all of those like you know little white kids you know 12 13 year old just getting into the wu-tang clan they didn't really hear the first album yet but they're like all right i'm gonna get into the woo i heard i saw the triumph single da, da, da. and then you know you're listening to this album, and what's this about the black man will rise again? <laughs> They're getting hit with some real fucking shit here. <laughs> some real out of context shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, okay, so it starts off with, you know, I, I think they're playing a role at first. Papa mm -hmm. Woo is, you know, yeah. Uh, you, you really don't expect an album. Like, you know, these guys are in their 20s, right? The, most of the Woo members. Yeah. <laughs> he starts off with a bunch of, like, a couple of, like, what, 50-year-old guys going, like, uh, they're doing acting out a little play. These things took over my body, and I can't even see no more. I'm calling my black woman a bitch. I'm calling my people all type of things that they not. I'm lost, brother. Can you help me, brother, please? <laughs> And he's just like, what, what's, what's happening right now? <laughs> and then as the song unfolds, they're like, the Wu Tang Clan is going to bring about the salvation that the world needs. The Wu Tang Clan <laughs> is it's going to rain down, <laughs> brothers and sisters. This is the training that's going to be given to you by the uh... Wu, because the revolution will not be televised. We are the original black man, the Asiatic black man, the mm. maker, the author, the cream of the planet Earth, father of civilization and daughters of the universe. Ooh. The population was 17 million with 2 million Indians, making 19 million, 4 million, 400 million all over the planet Earth. Arise, you gods! And then the rest of the album has nothing to do with any of that shit. No, <laughs> not really. And it's like, what? What? What was all that for? I was like, all right, all right, here, here we go. Let's, yeah, right. let's see what you got. The fucking roller coaster is going up the hill. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're not lying, dude. Um, But, yeah, then, it just, then it's just like, eh, just kidding. <laughs> right. I mean, like, I, I will give it this. There are a couple times on the album, like, um... The, there's a track on here that is very much against... Well, actually, no. There are a couple tracks on the album that are explicitly, like, anti-gun violence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking homicides going up, the murder rate's going up, and you're just contributing to that shit. And it's like, alright, cool. But really? That's, like, the only lesson yeah. that comes from the whole album, and that's only in a couple tracks. And so it's just like, what the fuck was all that built up for? And, and like, you know what? That's fine. I don't need it. I didn't necessarily want it. But if you're going to start the album off <laughs> with a six and a half minute thing that really makes it sound like it's going in that direction, it is a bit confusing when it doesn't. The first maybe five tracks of this album after War Revolution, I mm. think, are fucking solid as shit. And... Mm -hmm. I say that because it's like I was really listening back to this. You know, this is this this is one of those like, all right, gonna have to listen to this album that I really like and and be and be honest about it. Yeah. You know, like that's sort of like, oh boy, am I gonna am I gonna not like this album? <laughs> and but like reunited, fucking iconic. Mm. Every fucking verse was goddamn explosive. You got the genius business shit, old dirty bastard. Doing a fucking dope ass verse, I was yeah. fucking like, oh, okay. Where do you think? And what, see, the thing about the Wu is, 
it's all about it's all about the competition between these guys, right? You mm. know, you, I feel like as you listen to like the point of listening to this album is to be like, who's gonna beat who on this record? You know, look like, who's gonna yeah. be the best rapper on this record? And so you hear ODB and you're like, oh shit, he's actually coming with some shit. He's got a couple of fucking uh, quotables. I come like a thousand doves, bitch. Quiet at the bus, make it make it uh, make it no fuss. I got self love, ungloved the news, watching like it transfuse. Dirty at the fuse, heavy at the booze. I don't walk, I get carried. <laughs> Just that fucking, I don't walk, I get carried. <laughs> Golden platinum frisbees on my wall. Like, what, bitch? <laughs> it's just so goddamn, like, fucking shit. And, like, I don't think I've ever heard Old Dirty Bastard rap like this before. No. You know, like, he's always sort of fucking a little bleary-eyed. You know what I'm saying? With, with his flow. But this one's, like, on some fucking... There's one part where he goes, like, uh... What he says, uh, I UFO you white brothers, the Indians that sold Manhattan to the white man, my grandfather, step up and got knocked right the fuck out. And I'm like, what? what? I don't know what's happening, but that was kind of fucking epic. I think the only part of the al- the only part of the track that I thought was a bit, um, a bit awkward was, uh, Riz's verse. Yeah, okay, Rizza. I want to talk about something for a second. Rizza on the first album. Always sounded like he was like, no, it's it's the first album, and I think there was like, there was some shit where he did where his just his flow sounded like it used to be smoother. Oh, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And yeah. on this album, especially in particular, and when he does like Bobby Digital after this, like mm. he's just like, <laughs> like, and it's just like, all right, I mean, you know, it, like the lyrics are kind of dope, but it's it's the example of like the over lyricism at times and because of the way he enunciates things it ends up just sounding sloppy too impulsive my deadly corrosive doses attack when you reach notes too explosive poses like he's he says attack like the word is attack when you least notice but he goes attack when you least gnosis through explosive poses and it's just like what did you not hear that like you like, you're RZA. Like, you're the person who puts this all together. How do you... It, maybe it's that thing. Maybe it's, like, when you're yourself, you don't hear what your flaws are. So, like, like he's like the Spike Lee of this album. You know, he's directing everyone else. Everyone else is at their cues and at their marks. But it's just like, you, you know, you ever watch a Spike Lee movie and you notice that the worst acting in the movie is Spike Lee himself? Because, you know, no one's there to direct Spike Lee's acting. <laughs> You know, that, that, that's what I think is going on there. But then but then you got your boy, you know, Method kind of picks it up afterwards. So oh, look, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't hate too much. And then the fucking, like, the, that, those fucking violins yes. are goddamn extra uh, feature onto themselves. Should have been featuring whoever the fuck played that violin. Because goddamn, when it gets to the breakdown, the little... <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> I, th- I think it goes on a little too long. <laughs> I, I but mean, I like it. I feel like it, it works because it's like every moment of it feels cool, but mm. the girl who's doing the Wu-Tang motherfuckers, it's Wu motherfuckers, it feels kind of like there's so much epicness happening in, happening in the violin, which is like, I don't, I don't think we need just one person just saying Wu-Tang motherfuckers. Yeah, um, <laughs> I wasn't a fan of that. I thought that was kind of cringe, uh, how it's just starting off, it's Wu motherfuckers, like, that and the violins was like, this sounds so much different from Again, the it, first album. It's the sort of like, we're proving how epic yeah. we are. Like, mm-hmm. that's what this album is about. Um, uh, what was it? Oh, have you ever seen the video? It was always so random. Like, the chick is naked in the video. But oh, it's like, okay. But it's in a way that you could like almost not notice where it's just like, Oh, she's got the screen projecting on her body that has no clothes on it. Oh, oh, interesting. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, is this, is this a lot of the music video. I mean, I'm not gonna complain, but okay. <laughs> what are your overall favorite tracks? What got the highest ratings? The way I think about this album, when I when I think about it, it's like, okay, so I made a version of this album that I'm probably gonna be uh, playing for my station head. Uh, uh. Keep, keep an ear out there. Um, where I took away all the tracks that I thought were like. Eh, this isn't necessary to this track because you know w- w- what it is is it's lyrical exercises, right? You're entering mm. the chambers of the Wu Tang. This is this is the Wu Tang chambers, uh, the thirty six chambers, but with a bigger budget, right? That's the uh, whole idea. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you're, you're tuning into each lyricist. The problem is, it's like as epic as some parts are, it starts to sag a little bit, right? I feel mm. like the album goes from the epic. 
futuristic sort of bombastic, uh, uh, you know, Mozartian sort of uh, <laughs> lyricism and beats to sort of the Michael Bayish sort of way of doing pomposity, uh, where it's just okay. like literal just explosions at certain points. Oh my god, yeah, what the fuck was that part? Holy shit. The first couple of tracks, they just flow well. Like, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. as you listen to, like, when I think of, like, Run the Jewels uh, 3, you know, like, mm. that whole, there's a whole portion of that album that's just, like, it's not that each single is, like, you know, you listen to it by yourself, but it's, like, it's an experience that right. you would definitely go through. Because I think of Reunited and how epic and classical music that sounds, mm. and then I think of how it goes into For Heaven's Sake, which is, like, Jet sets you into the fucking future with these fucking weird ass, like strange fucking. There's like a clock going on in the background with with these strange violins and shit. Where it's like, oh, the the epic burning in the sample that oh baby for heaven's sake, like it's just mm. so big and over the top and so strange and then fucking inspect the deck comes in the oh. goddamn superstar of mm. the fucking album just yeah. incredible lyric after incredible lyric uh just, oh, just the first fucking lyric my rap style swings like willie mays my eyes purple haze my solar rays will burn through shades rhyme grenades raid the airways catch this rap page i glide like hovercrafts on the everglades and it's like as you're hearing that lyric you hear the little <laughs> happening behind him so it's like you can almost hear like the hovercraft just like flying it's just so fucking epic as you hear this song and, and then you know Mastical and Capadonna come on the track and you know interestingly enough as I listen back to it they fit over a beat like this mm. but it, it starts to sort of they are sort of the, the pitfall of this album, Capadonna and, and Masticilla. Yeah. And I say that as someone who used to like Masticilla a lot more, but it's mm. just like, you're just listening to these flows and you're just like, do you know where the beat is, man? Like, what is going on, you know? And and I always hear, like, they, they all taught each other how to rhyme, but it's just like, okay, what did Ghostface Killer not tell Method Man that Method Man didn't tell <laughs> Capadonna? You know, like, what's going on here? <laughs> I, I taught you everything you know, but I didn't teach you everything <laughs> I know. I had to keep the, <laughs> I had to keep these uh, other style uh, apart from you because one day I may have to use it on you. <laughs> fucking uh, knowledge is power, and I gotta keep that upper hand. No, this fucking track starts off so fucking strong with the last track with the it's woo motherfuckers. It's like uh huh yeah okay, but then oh man. Almost like to the point of like almost getting fucking chills hearing the woo tang woo. Yeah, yeah there it is. That's what I was looking for. There it is. Like, like that's what I would have wanted over reunited instead of the fucking it's woo mm. motherfucker. Like that's so whack. Yeah, whatever. you're right. You're right. But yeah. oh, the fucking dope beat and the woo tang chance and inspected deck like right out the gate was like okay. Yeah, but then boy, fucking Capadon and Master Kill really do mu- uh, muddy the waters there. I'll tell you this, um, as someone who never really listened to the album, never really gave it much of a chance until this week, um, I'll tell you what got my highest ratings. Uh, Heaters. Hmm, okay. Uh, Hell's Wind Staff. Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> the beat for that is fucking out of this world! <laughs> uh, I got here, uh, Duck Season. Okay, okay. Uh, how about uh, L- Little Ghetto Baby? Uh, Little Ghetto Boy? This is wow, interesting, shit. though. Okay. This is okay. kind of interesting. And, <laughs> All of the- uh, <laughs> Those are your favorite tracks. And uh, Impossible. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. the- oh, I- I'm sorry, I also forgot Older Gods. This is okay. So I'm gonna Whoa, take my favorite track. Did we fucking have an like an opposite thing here? <laughs> yeah, this is weird. Whoa. Okay. 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 Look. Look. Okay. Before we go any further, I feel like I feel like I should also go over the lowest ratings and see how different those. Yeah. Are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, let's see what's going on here. <laughs> okay. 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 Um. Second coming. Uh. You know. 
I see the purpose of that song. Do right? you? Yeah. Okay. In in a world in, in which the intro had anything to do with the rest of the album, mm. this sort of second coming outro kind of fits, right? Where it's like, oh, the epicness of the woo. They've risen from the ashes. I don't know what they were going to tell you, but they did it. But what you got as a fucking closer to the album, <coughs> yeah. n- n- not counting the actual the actual closing uh, closing <laughs> track, is what sound like keyboard preset instrumentals. <laughs> like holy shit! Um, and you got um, I'm not sure how you pronounce her name here. Takitha, uh, I think. Takitha doing this MacArthur Park. Interpolation. Yeah! Oh man, I didn't oh. know what song that was it's until so I found bad, out. Dude. And that dude, <laughs> finding out what it is makes it so much more awkward. <laughs> Cause then you're like, oh, it's a parody? <laughs> like, yeah, why? like you were making it's a so epic, parody. This parody. <laughs> yeah. Like and you know what it is? A song like this kind of exposes Riz's uh limitations um, mm. um concerning what he can do. Because Whenever he's being creative, like, the first part of the first uh, disc of this album is, like, him firing on all, on all cylinders, reunited, it's inspired when he has the fucking violin, for heaven's sake, the beat is out of this fucking world. Like, this album really, like, as I was listening to it, I was like, this album is really kind of like a, like, it, an abstract rap masterpiece. Like, Ghostface <laughs> Killer is the star when it comes to, like, the abstract lyricism, but yeah. they all kind of do that. And the way, like, the songs kind of are giving you, like, a mood or an emotion that the lyrics play off of. It's really cool. Like, I think about it in terms of, uh, you know how, okay, so Biggie and, you know, P. Diddy were doing, you know, the epic cinematic rap around the same time, right? <laughs> yeah. But for them, it was a story. There was kind of like, you know, there was a narrative that, that they were doing. If they were like the the, the Steven Spielberg of rap, uh, Wu-Tang was like the the, the, Jean Lark, uh, the Jean-Luc Godard or something like that. You know, uh, the, the fucking experimental weird art house films or something like that. That's, that's somehow I've got a big budget. You know, this is like the fucking... This is their fifth element or some shit. This is like the Luke Besson somehow was able to get a big budget for a movie and did all this weird shit. Because it's like, you, you have fucking cash still rules. Goddamn epic. I fucking underrate Raekwon as a lyricist sometimes. And, yeah. like, he has this fucking... I don't know how else to put it, but just these weirdly, like, like diamond-encrusted lyricism where it's just like... It's like it doesn't rhyme the typical way, but he gives you like these little things that are so like interesting that like holy shit, you just would have never thought to say something that way, you know? Like, I it's hard to explain. You just have to fucking listen to him. You know what I mean? In uh, in Cash Still Rules, I think Raekwon impressed me the least uh, compared to Meth. Because and- then fucking Meth comes in it, and again you fucking forget how awesome he is. And, and can I just say? Can- all right, look. What? <sighs> I, 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 I don't think I've ever been this frustrated at a song that you got Ghostface on at the end, right? Uh, and mm-hmm. he's just, he's on a fucking tear. He, he's going off. <laughs> and you fucking fade him you out fade in him? mid-verse? <laughs> What the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> this album's two, oh, like two hours long. What are you trying to do? Save time now? <laughs> oh, we gotta cut something off. What are we gonna do? Oh, cut off some of that good ass fucking Ghostface verse. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Second coming could have gone. We could have got more Ghostface. No, <laughs> but my lowest rated tracks, because I- I'm curious oh, just yeah. to see. Uh, we we got second coming. I yeah. Um, here's where we might have a conflict of interest. Mm. Dog shit. Uh, not necessarily. Okay, because I know you're more of an ODB fanboy than I am. Yeah, but it's like, as I'm listening to it, again, it's just like, I know why I like it, but I also know why most (laughs) people don't. (laughs) Alright, how about, uh, how about Maria? Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Oh, man. No fucking way, dude. Wu-Tang forever, eh? (laughs) Wu-Tang is teaching the children, eh? Oh, you're you're, you're hipping them to what's going on out here, out here in these streets. What the fuck was this fucking song? I guess, you know, this is them cutting loose, you know, trying to to have fun. Oh, yeah, they're having some fun. Oh, yeah. (laughs) 
Um, man, I hate to say it, but it was almost like the tracks that ODB touched are oh, the ones. Absolutely. Because then the other one fucking as high as we'll take it. No, <laughs> no. It, it's a very see that one is a very one of the oddly mismatched songs. On yeah. I feel like Older Gods is the same, where it's like Ghostface okay. Killer and Raekwon are cool together, and then it's just like a chorus happens, and then oh yeah, BT Dubs genius wants to do a verse. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, all right, <laughs> you know. See, um, I, I I thought the fucking Older Gods had solid verses like all around. Hmm. I thought that one was fucking dope. He, he, he um, does the uh, Raekwon holding my nuts, fucking thousand dollar lesbians. <laughs> I'm like what? Mm. <laughs> like, I mean, I I, I I fucking took issue with with Raekwon and his frequent f bombs too. Uh, yeah, yeah, but... but that's what I'm saying. Uh, that later song, what was it? The one where he raps Duck on it season. twice. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I I did not like that one. Look, <laughs> Whereas, on, if it every wasn't homos, yo, my style's out of it in the dolo. The two big issues I had with that track, uh. The f bombs during Raekwon's verse, which otherwise I thought was pretty solid, and it's sounding like RZA has a fucking bite of sandwich in his fucking cheeks. <laughs> the RZA, solid verses. Thank God for genius, dude. I would not be able to understand what the fuck he was saying if I didn't have the lyrics <laughs> right in front of my face. But solid verses from RZA. Um, I thought that was fire. Meth. Ray comes back. I thought they all had really good verses. I can overlook the goddamn F-bombs, which I wasn't a fan of, but he fucking, you know, I can't deny the rest of it was pretty solid. Dude, my thing is, I'm a very, like, when I talk about this album in terms of, like, abstract rap, like, it is so cool how, like, I feel like, especially as a kid, right, you know, they, they had so much slang and, you know, they were doing all this ill, like, shit with lyricism and, and the visuals and the way it came together. Like, there would be times of, like, I could visualize music videos to these fucking songs. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's how epic they are. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like, that's how, like, full and intense they are. And it's like, I know this isn't necessarily going to be a hit single. And it's actually kind of, like, baffling how this album sold so well. Like, fucking only in the 90s. Like, can you imagine something with this level of no hooks and just, like, pure lyricism for most Dude, of the time? Like, this see, would not fucking have flown today. That's what I'm getting at with, um, the fucking one-two punch. The undeniable one-two punch of, uh, Hell's Windstaff and Heaters. It's yeah, just like, yeah, no, verse, yeah. verse, 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 verse. Mm. It's non-stop, and they're Dude, all good verses. And fucking, uh, I actually feel like Street Life, again. Yeah. Like, don't, he fucking showed up, like, right. oh my god. Just the first lyric, like, get your head cracked by my hell's with staff. <laughs> Dude, I, I didn't know who the fuck he was going in. But Dude, he fucking delivered. Like, Dude, I'm, god I'm looking- damn. Fucking Ghostface Killer fucking showed up. Inspector mm. Deck, Matt, even RZA fucking. I feel like this yeah. is his, his clearest verse. Yeah, uh, where it, where he says uh, where it's like from digital to analog, the Wu Wei camouflage. My entourage squad be stomping through Zanzibar like herds of cattle. RZA plays the wall like a shadow. Connect with Brooklyn Shaolin like the Verizon. Oh, like holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! With, with fatal guillotines, the black hooded teams. Uh, oh shit! The fatal guillotine, the black hooded team, what it means when bullet screams from the block hot like, uh, oh shit, I can't even fucking say it. <laughs> it's I, just like, uh, holy sh- and then you hear the, sometimes. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. Th- th- dude, that one is so fucking cool. You feel like you're like floating on the clouds <laughs> while a fucking sword fight is happening in between the verses. Holy shit. Th- again, that's one of those tracks where it's just like, ascending to the Olympian heights of what hip-hop can be, what it can offer, you know what I mean? It's just, I, I, it gets me on my nerd hip-hop shit, where it's just like, holy fuck, like, through just sound alone, you've delivered this world, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it's like the audio version of comic books for me, you know? Like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. The, there was one track, by the way, I forgot that I also gave a high rating to, and I don't know if you're gonna agree with me or not, the MGM. I, yeah! Yeah! I, 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 Dude, I oh, I really love shit like that. What we what you got here is Raekwon and Ghostface <laughs> yeah. just basically having a rap conversation at a boxing match. Yes, I love it. It's so dope. I hate that it's only two and a half minutes. Right. Oh, and, and like a minute of it is just short. the beat. Like, come on, guys. 
Yeah, I don't know what the fuck <laughs> that was about. Um, right, right, uh, remember he says, uh, he says, uh, if a civilized person doesn't perform his duty, what shall be done? And then uh, uh, Ghost interrupts him. Pardon me, God, that nigga got a gun bulging in his sweatpants. Check out his <laughs> stance. Yo, see the side of his grill? And then Raekwon comes in, look like my cousin Lance. Like, it's just the way they're just talking, just like, yeah. it's oh. just so natural. <laughs> it's so fucking fluid. I love it, that shit. It keeps yeah. me smiling the whole time. Like, and then just, the like, the way they just talk, it's so nuanced. You feel like you're really living in the world where he says, like, left hand Rocky, guess what? Yo, I think I did his clocks. He wanted the crush bone leather with the strings dark. Oh, now I remember. He from Bear Mountain. He and Mitch Green shot the fair one near the water fountain. And it's just like, holy shit! It's I, just like, I, you just know about these people's lives by the end of the song, you know? I hate that. I, I keep overlooking these fucking high ratings. I forgot a better tomorrow. Yeah! Dude, uh, A Better Tomorrow is a fucking solid joint right? at the fucking end of that first album, yeah. It, it's the one that actually feels like it's living up to what, you know, yeah. they were talking about at the beginning. Yeah. All but, these, li- even fucking Master Killer shows up. Yeah. Um, has a, like, it, it, see, he, sh- he shows here what Master Killer's flow can do. Yeah, it's not like, you know, it's not slippery like meths, and it's not like, really, like, crazy, like, Ghostface Killers. It's like, it, he spools out the story in a way that's just, like, affects you with how he's saying the words on the beat. Brother's been slain by hails of gunfire. It lightly begins to rain screams of terror that are hidden by the passing trains. This can't be little Usain. His uncle cries as he Ugh. drops to his nephew's side holding his cane. Just give me a name of who has mm. inflicted this bitter sickness and left us to witness. Ah! That was Ooh. fucking masterful. <laughs> yeah, that was so goddamn good. And it's just like, holy shit, that's how fucking dope Master Killer can be, man. You know? And I don't want you to think that when I was giving the high ratings for those other ones, um, ev- everything else, every other track I didn't mention by name, either got like a three or a three and a half. This album feels solid as fuck. I feel like, you know, for the first four or five tracks... It just flows from one song to the next. You hear, like, a incredible lyricism, airy production that, like, every now and then gets you this really dark tint to it. It's just all this crazy shit happening, weird transitions that sort of drop you into the next songs. And then you get severe punishment. Mm. And coincidentally, the first time you hear You God, and it's just, like, You God is, like, it's weird. So when I hear Ghostface Killer doing his abstract lyricism stuff, I'm always like, what's he going to say next? Like, wh- where is he going? What's he going to say next? With You God, I'm always like, wh- where is he going? Wh- wh- what is he <laughs> and it, it's such a subtle difference, right? Like, like with Ghostface, the, the words, the wording is so florid and just like lyrical that you're just like, what the fuck? Who could have thought of this? But with You God, you're just like, what is he, what is he saying? See, I, I liked his verse in, the, in that track. And I, th- I thought Jizza, Raekwon, Rizza, I thought they all had solid verses. Again, Rizza, a little awkward. Going <laughs> off beat. I, I got the muscle of the industrial to make a hustle. In, in politics, we leave it all wrestle. We niggas are still wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? What, what, what was that? <laughs> but, uh, but then you got your boy uh, ending <laughs> the track with just the weakest verse in the whole song. Fucking Master Killer. <laughs> Not uh, such a day and a night. On the mic to Arabian Nights, as I recite. There's one song where you hear that, and it's like, uh, Master Killer starts it, and he's like, uh, uh, as we return to the 36 chambers, the Rizza, the Jizza, <laughs> old dirty biz, and like, all right, come on, man, like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> you god chef, the ghost face killer, and ref, rebel eye soldier for the foreclosure. Don't forget about the master. <laughs> Yo, motherfuckers ho. When my co- And he's like, wait, did he start the verse? Is it, has he been rapping this whole time? This I did not tell. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, um... But, oh, oh, yeah, it was fucking... Yeah, uh... It was severe punishment where the, the sort of... The tropes of RZA's production and their lyricism started to kind of not really hit me as much, right? First, you got mm. a way more basic beat with just the... Duh, 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 
You know, it's just like... <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That, like, that's literally all that happens. And then it, the intro with the... Whistle, whistle, dun, 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 number two, Chow San Poi. Dun, 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 number two, Chow San Poi. Dun, dun, dun. He's a womanizer, but he's an expert at throwing knives. Fucking... Dun, 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 number two, Chow San Poi. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like, stop doing that! <laughs> they fucking... They really beat the fucking samples to <laughs> death. <laughs> And this album, holy shit. But like, you guys, like, time's ticking, erupt, misconduct, injury, one funk before the drum dry up, dab, style, jab, vocab, slow, alphabet run, construction voice might blow. And it's just like, I, it's just like, it's abstract, but in a way that's not weird enough for me to be interested in what he's saying. It, it feels like a basic version of abstractism. Like, it's, it, it's, it's, it's cubist. I guess you could say, right? Where it's like overly simplifying the style for a certain type of style, but I'm not necessarily sure that means that I like it anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's weird to get it. Actually, let, let's do this. Uh, d d if, as we did with the freestyles, did you also have like a ranking of like your favorite uh, uh, rapper on this album? Oh, you know? man. Um, no, but uh, the, the, the people that I definitely give the most... Uh, the most praised to are Deck and Ghostface. Yeah, they are the Easily. fucking stars. The oh, stars fucking, of this album. It's like not even close. <laughs> um, I, I would say if I'm going to do it in twos, I would say like Inspected Deck and Ghostface. Uh, then, uh, then maybe like Raekwon and Meth. Uh, because I don't really remember Jizza on too many of these, actually. Yeah, you know, the, I was, like, I keep nah, being shocked yeah. by that. Every time I listen back to this album, I'm like, the Jizza's not really on it. I do have written down, whenever he does show up, um, like, I do like what, I do like what he's bringing to the table. Fucking prime example, though, what you were just talking about? We haven't even really mentioned it yet, but Triumph. Yes. He's got, like, the shortest fucking verse yeah, on that like track. Yeah, like, six bars, and it's just, like... Barely on there! The thing that I heard is that... He saw it. He heard Inspector Deck's verse, and he was like, "It was so good." He was like, "I don't know what the fuck else I'm gonna say next to that." And I'm like, first of all, that's gotta feel like quite the fucking compliment when the goddamn genius is like Inspector Deck. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, and I remember there was something about how originally he was like, he wanted the verse, to, he, uh, the Jizza had suggested that the song should just be his verse. It was like, where the fuck else do you go after that? <laughs> I, do, I do get a mention because we, we're talking about Inspected Deck. Inspected Deck uh, gets his own uh, solo track. Yeah, The in City. The City. Uh, not the strongest track on the album, but I you think know, he did fine on it. The interesting thing is, I remember when I was younger, I used to not like the solo tracks. And I think it's specifically because, you know, it's fucking nine of you guys. Do you have fucking time? Like, what? <laughs> That's what the albums are for. Like, what the fuck? But I think it specifically works because it's like, hey, Inspector Deck and you guys, you know, the guys you don't really, you, you haven't heard the albums from yet, you know, like, here's who's next, you know? Um, but yeah, the way I'd rank is Inspector Deck, Method Man, I actually think, is uh, second dopest. Ghostface Killer, because, like, his stuff is, like, dope as shit with how, like, abstract and weird he gets, but it, there are times where it's kind of like, w what? I bought a tennis court for your birthday, huh? What? <laughs> uh, then Raekwon, who, again, surprised me, like, I did not used to like him as much, but I was just like, huh, he's actually fucking holding his own more than the Jizza on this album, which is like, what? But it's just... He just wasn't, like, on the second album, he's basically not there. Like, he does, he does the six bars on Triumph, and then he appears, um, in that one song, the, uh, Heaters. The, uh, 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 no, wait, uh, what's that song, uh, uh, the one where Method Man, uh, say my shit holding my sex pistol deal me in, and then the RZA in him, like, trade off randomly, like, we'll be wildering, quill and be quick to sting ya, I ain't gotta lift one fucking finger, Make sure the God I Reef turns on the ringer. That one. Um, what is that? Oh, yeah. I cock back my tongue like a hammer. My head is like a nickel-plated bammer. Spit 45 caliber grammar. At the speed of wind, make you bleed within. Crack the skull without penetrating the skin. It's just like, holy shit. Like, I was like, these weird, strange, like, it's like, again, like, gangster rap 
it's abstract gangster rap. It really is. Because it's like, it's so much deeper than like what a G unit would sort of say. But it's like, it's not really that much content wise deeper. But it's just really fascinating with how they lay it out. You know what I mean? Um, what is that? A ghost face on uh, uh, Bells of War. Wax Janitor, Black Jack Mulligan from Canada, Slam Dance Tarantula Style. He was a fan of the Monopoly King, Slavic Poetry, Carnegie Hall's off the hook. Let's push through the armory. I'm like, that's one of those things. I was like, I don't know what the fuck you just said, but that was fucking awesome. I Again, I enjoyed the city. Uh, that's what we're yeah. getting to. I enjoyed it more than I, uh, I thought I would. I liked uh, his lyricism. I liked how it was uh, more somber for the switch up. The the beat afterwards kind of went on for like a minute and a half way too fucking long yeah mm -hmm. but um i like that it was like because he had actually produced this track and so it was mm. really sort of like in, you know inspector deck you know showing what he can do um what was that one lyric he says like issue 38 specials that step through like nat turner create a spectacle i may die in a scuffle but i'm taking 40 devils i love the fucking just this um it was sort of like a, the sort of track where it's just like, you know, the future's really dark and we don't know what's going to happen, so we're preparing for it. And you hear the sort of, so you hear like the cellos like with the little, meh, meh, meh. so it's like really like somber. And it, again, it's it like epicness is the name of the game for this yeah. album. And unfortunately, there's, there's a lot of times where the epicness sort of deflates which kind of ruins the experience on certain points. Like Little Ghetto Boys, I didn't enjoy it as much mm, because... Okay. You get Raekwon, and then Cap, and then no one else. And you're like, oh, oh all right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, here's uh, a point of the album that I mm. got to mention. Okay. Um, because it's got it's got skits, kind of. Yeah. Um, and they're okay. They're like uh, related semi to the song. I don't know? hate them. I don't hate them. I'm not going to get use out of that MC Chris sample this week. But, <laughs> um... Towards the end here, and I think you know where I'm going. At the end mm. of Heaters, uh, there's a skit. <laughs> oh, and, man. And, and can I just tell you, because I've never heard the album before, and just because of like how the skits go, I was waiting for that to go south the whole what? time. What were you waiting for? <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for her to, like, kill him. <laughs> like, like... Oh, he's a, he's a, he feels so secure. He feels all safe at home. Oh, man, I always think people are going to fucking pull a knife on, on me. <laughs> but not you, baby. It was leading up to that shit. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. Like, I had no idea where it was going to go. And then it's, nah, baby, you're home. And it's like, oh. It's just oh. anticlimactic, yeah. And then it's just like, oh, that was all just supposed to be sweet and, then, and relaxing? What, oh, yeah, okay. It just goes on for like... 10 seconds too long where I'll, he's just like yeah it goes way on for way longer yeah well, but I mean it's just like well, the, like for them to be hitting on this note this long there has oh, to yeah. be something ironic happening right but then it's just like oh no it's just the nope. intro to a oh, hard days of work hard uh, days of work you got getting his fucking Barry White on and uh, you know what you no, know what no I never used to like it but I gotta say, <laughs> it it doesn't fit at the tail end of the album. <laughs> it no, feels no, weird for it to be here. But like, if you're thinking about it in terms of like, you know, okay, Inspector get Deck gets his sort of solo joint and he makes it about that, and you got gets a solo joint and he wants to make it about you know something that's not just like rap shit. He wants to make it like, and I actually kind of dug that. Like he made it like abstract rap about being with his girl. And just sort of like, I actually kind of like the the the, uh, the um uh, uh, what it's it's the way they paint the scene, right? Like, and I actually kind of like enjoyed the way you got did it, which is funny because for the rest of the album, I I I, I could have skipped every one of his verses. <laughs> like, but dude, I, I for this one, man, I I was listening back to it, I was like, I think we was a little too harsh on you, boy. I think we might. I think what happened was hardcore rap, hardcore rap, 
and what's this fucking love song doing on here? You know what I mean? I I, I think it, I think mm. we just need to give it an extra second. Uh, uh just, just just put it put it on your uh, love song playlist. You know, on on your mate on, on your baby making playlist. See if oh, it don't yeah. fit in. See if it don't fit in. That's all I'm saying. Complete silence. What surrounds us was the finest. Wrapped in cold sheets, vanilla apple heat. Flutes play jazz music, puffy pillow mm. sheets, and you're like, boop, 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 boop. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, breakfast in bed, early morning sun treats, sunset level surprise, sunrise sale, lay on the couch while I clip your toenails, dreams of peaches and cream, stream secret spells, soft spoken go- gospel, very white acapella, and you hear the music swell with the. I thought that was kind of fresh, man. I was like, mm. huh. You know, I, I'm not I'm not hating it. I am not hating it. It but might have come down to context. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Again, it does not fit at the tail end of especially when the next track is like the second coming, the epicness of the woo has has dropped upon us. It's like I did it because you just did a love song. So yeah, I didn't really feel like. <laughs> <laughs> Again, nothing about the nothing about the end of the album is epic except <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um fucking Raekwon <laughs> <laughs> leaving in style. <laughs> Your boy knows how to make an exit is all I'm going to say. Uh, we got a very odd ending to the album and as soon as I heard it I texted you. <laughs> Because I, I was just in disbelief. Because, <laughs> like, you text me, like, yo, is that what happens? And I just text you, like, I just happened to listen to the end of the, Like, I just got to the end, and, like, five minutes later, you send me a text, like, does he actually leave in a helicopter? <laughs> it's basically just, like, yeah, that album's pretty dope, right? Yeah, you're welcome. Bye. <laughs> just takes off in a fucking helicopter, and it's like, yeah, think about that shit. All right, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make like, this awkward, slow exit in a helicopter. <laughs> but the thing about it is, it's like, I don't, it's like, did you know what he was saying? No! <laughs> no! Was, like, <laughs> was, like, was I supposed to? <laughs> it's like, uh, huh? It's like, when you walk, you're striving for perfection. That's what we're doing. You understand? So on a little fake shit out there, we know the science is on that. We don't see enough shit from differences of angles, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, but it's all good, because I'm the soul controller. You know, whatever I say, we the soul controllers, you know. Bottom line, like I said, deal with freedom, justice, equality. And I'm like, what? Freedom, justice, equality? Where did that come up on the album? Is this the this is the lesson for today? On the I'm like, where, where did you bring that up? That wasn't had nothing to do with anything. But then he goes like, you know, keep shining. Food, clothing, and shelter. I'm gonna w- w- go pick up uniforms when you buy this album. Go, go oh. pick up uniforms. Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck? What was that? Did you just tell us to like buy, <laughs> get woo wear uh, now? And oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the something sodium glu- glutamate. I don't remember. Ah, the sodium benzoate. <laughs> it ain't what you want, baby. It's what you need. Oh yeah, we got your fucking Maria over here. We got to talk about that goddamn track oh, for at least my a God. second. I see you at the five and dive, wasting your time. Oh, you shine. I'm looking at your ass from behind. You walk by smelling like watermelon. You might make me a felon. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Why oh, will she make you a felon? <laughs> what, what is she you gonna do? Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might make me a felon. My eyeballs swelling. My mm. nuts. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's a fucking cartoon character. He's the fucking wolf. <laughs> In, yeah. the, in those old, oh, uh, banging on the table and shit, <laughs> hitting, my, hitting his head with a frying pan. <laughs> my eyeballs swelling. My nuts start yelling. Excuse my <laughs> prick. I want to have a talk <laughs> with you. I'm sick. My yeah. medicine is. Can I walk with you? Oh. What the no. fuck is this? Capadonna, did you just say your dick started talking to her? Did you just say? Pardon ex- my prick. <laughs> Stop it. My nuts start yelling. <laughs> yelling. <laughs> Look, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna say, if this was someone else, maybe like again, context, maybe. Like, who might be able to put, like, actually get it, you know, across, deliver yeah, these yeah. lyrics, maybe a little funnier, or whatever. But when they're delivered this, like, straight... Yeah, with Cap's awkward, like, my nuts start yelling, excuse my prick. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know, man. Like, do you know how silly this sounds? Right. You but have I, to know, right? I think we had talked about this at one point. It was like, my yeah. nuts start yelling. And I remember, because I remember you said like, so, you know, I mean, his dick's in his pants, right? So all you're just hearing is mumbled. <laughs> 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 and she, you know she's got to be walking by like, what's that? Wait, I could have sworn I just saw one guy walk past, but like I know I didn't hear from him because it would have been. Like, ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, that's next with you. Ah! <laughs> there it is again. I just, I, I, I. It's only us on this busy street, so it's impossible to. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Pardon my prick. I'm sorry. You know, he has a um, mind of its own. And, oh, I'm sorry. You don't gotta listen to him. My nuts start yelling. Excuse my prick. Want to have a talk with you? See, I'm sick, and my uh. medicine is. Can I walk with you? <laughs> Fuck off, Cappuccino. Nothing can stop his continuous poke. Oh. <laughs> 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 I don't know what to think about that. It's so bad, dude. Oh, uh, oh, um, so, uh, here's the moment where uh, we got to find out once and for all. Uh, what all was right, your that- average... What was your average overall score for Wu Tang Forever? So, um, mm. a- after after much deliberation, yes, I, you know, thinking about it in terms of you know how the song the song sounds sonically, all all, all, all that fun bullshit, mm. and being honest with what songs are good, what songs are whack, and how it all together comes together as a package, mm-hmm. I give it a three point five. Me too. Five. But with all that said, that about wraps up our uh, review of Wu-Tang Forever and this episode of the Gone Off Podcast. Uh, we want to give a big thanks uh, to our uh, Patreon supporter who requested... Yes, Darren Doster. Thank you. Mm-hmm, coming through. Um, uh, fulfilling the prophecy, though, that we, were event- that we would eventually review that mm-hmm. fucking album. And if there's an album you would like to hear us talk about on the show... Head on over to either uh, patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse uh, for details. We do plan on uh, making that a little more streamlined, uh, yes. the system. We're trying to get on Kofi and see you know, see how that's working. Yeah, the, the, the way we're looking is setting up a unified Kofi, uh, and then we just kind of split uh, the, uh, the proceeds. Yeah, um, so let us know what you think about that, you know? Yeah, if that sounds like that might work out better, let us know. Um, it's probably not going to be for a little ways out because we want to make sure everybody has heard it, everyone knows about it. Uh, so we're probably going to maybe like open the next episode with it so you know we don't want anyone to miss out or be confused when things change up. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking about it on Twitter and stuff like that. Make sure you're following us on Spotify. Uh, that's the easiest way to make sure you don't miss the episode. They go live on Sunday. Uh, day before the episodes go live on uh, YouTube, so you can be the cool kid that hears it first. Exactly. Uh, and that's the and that's the only place that you can hear all of the episodes in one place, and not have them split up uh, between our uh, two YouTube channels. Speaking of YouTube, make sure you subscribe to both of our YouTube channels because we post content fairly frequently. Mm. Uh, and uh, that about wraps things up. That about covers all the bases. But uh, thank you very much for listening. If this is your first time uh, listening, as I mentioned on Spotify, you can you can make a weekend of it. You can just go back and just fucking marathon over 200 episodes of our goddamn yes. Going on fucking... forever. Ooh, yeah? How about that? <laughs> and it'll feel like it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that about wraps it up. Uh, so for the Going Off podcast, until next week, I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic. And... Big Bolo stacking his shit, financial Volvo. He copies shit from a small coffee shop in Soho. He's still pussy. He sells dust up in the Lower East, posing like he rap nominees. He